co-founder and co-CEO of The Daily Wire, claims that Twitter canceled a deal with The Daily Wire to premiere Matt Walsh's What is a Woman documentary on the platform for free because of two instances of misgendering that occur during the course of the film. Now, according to Jeremy Boring, who is the co-founder of The Daily Wire, he went on the, a very interesting Twitter thread about this. He says that Twitter backed out of an agreement that it made with The Daily Wire after content moderators determined they would actually limit the reach of the film and label it as hateful conduct because of misgendering. Specifically, in the film, a father refer refers to his 14-year-old um, biological daughter, I believe, as a her, and then a story owner uses the wrong pronoun in a confrontation with a trans person. The Daily Wire reminded Twitter that they removed misgendering uh, from their policy as something that they'll take action against. And then, again, this is according to Jeremy Boring's telling. Twitter clarified that they only removed misgendering from their policy because they didn't need to be specific, but they still consider the act of misgendering covered under their general policy against abuse and harassment. They then gave the outlet the opportunity to edit the film in order to comply. The Daily Wire says, no way, Jose, on that. Uh, this is very interesting, and uh, Jeremy Boring and Matt Walsh and, and Ben Shapiro are very, uh, I think, understandably upset. Because let's be real specific about what, and, and again, I haven't heard Twitter's side of this, so this is all from their perspective. Mm -hmm. But you know, these are people who are not anti-Twitter or anti-Elon Musk at all. Oh. They were just moving all their content there. That's so what they said. Their, their videos are going to appear there. So I, so I, I'm, I, I think we could take what they're saying with the like. They're not going going to go out of their way to be uncharitable to Twitter. They're saying that Twitter was going to limit the reach, the distribution of the film just being published on Twitter because of misgendering that occurs during the film. And I think this is a pretty, um, this is not a great application, even if there is a policy, even if Twitter's position is you can't just like abusively, you know, go out and start using the wrong pronoun at someone in a, like a proactive or spamming, hateful fashion. I can understand why they, you know, if you just keep like replying to Caitlyn Jenner, like you're a dude, you're a dude, you're a dude, they're going to take action against that. I, I understand that. This is a film that already exists, mm -hmm. and you know, within the film, this is kind of like this is getting close to the territory where like there are there's like a racial slur in a book or something because sure. it's a can't, historical can't context. Play Gone with the Wind or right? Isn't this uh, kind of like that? Tiffany's right. because of the Andy Rooney character. right? Like this because, happened. Yeah. I mean, in the documentary, someone it's not even it's not the Daily Wire person who, who's doing it. It's some third. It's somebody interviewed or or portrayed in the course of the film. Like that's a perspective, legitimate perspective. Would they take action against a film that was like pro that was uh, from a liberal perspective as progressive? It was it was making all the arguments that trans people wanted to make and depicted misgendering um, from but from the perspective of calling it out right would they censor that like this is kind of crazy it, it's very unclear what the policy is but the part of this that is even more interesting to go me ahead go go off Brianna I know where you're gonna go with this new Twitter old rules yeah and again, this is not, I'm not coming from the perspective of someone who didn't want Musk to take over and was out to get him from the, from the get-go, but he made very specific claims about the changes he was going to make to Twitter, because this was the reason why he was buying Twitter and spending $44 billion of his own money. It's because he had an objection to these kinds of rules. And now we're seeing, if, if what the Daily Caller people are saying is true, that they have not actually changed any of the, the policy on misgendering, that they chose to remove it explicitly from their policy so that they have could say to conservatives, oh, look, we're making these changes. This is no longer the policy. But behind the scenes, still operating in the exact same way, which maybe is fine. Maybe it is the case mm -hmm. that corporations make these kind of decisions because they're corporations and they need to make money, advertisers have demands, and they all bend the knee. But that being the case, can Elon Musk continue to hold himself out as this courageous person who stands up in the face of censorship and does the right thing if he bends the knee to uh, these uh, old, old guard policies, if he bends the knees to advertisers, if he bends the knee to Turkey, if he bends the knee to India, if he bends the e e knee to the EU, per the segment we are talking about earlier today. Right. Maybe it's okay. You're no worse than anybody else. I'm not trying to pile on to you. But can you be described as the uh, overseer of the freest place on the internet as he was characterized on the Ron DeSantis uh, campaign launch on Twitter, if in fact you are operating the site substantially in the same way as the people who came before you. And I think this choice, unlike some of those other things which you mentioned, this is 
being freely chosen by Twitter. Right. Not no no Turkish government said, right. "Hey, you can't. We're going to hurt you right. if you post this." Um, this is this is freely chosen by Twitter, and honestly, it's pretty close to the exact thing that allegedly is is what inspired Elon Musk to acquire Twitter in the first place. Is that he didn't like that uh, they had taken action against the Babylon Bee, that, which is a satire from a conservative Christian perspective website that had engaged in misgendering. Mm -hmm. And they, I think they suspended the entire account of the Babylon Bee. Mm. And Elon Musk uh, was was really perturbed by that. Mm -hmm. That was, he's been, and in fact, I think he did, a, he did a podcast or some kind of video with the Babylon Bee that was released like yesterday, mm. where they're all kind of celebrating the new free speech regime, the new... Um, and, and so I saw the Babylon Beat guy talking about this Daily Wire case, and, and he, he seems <laughs> pretty disappointed, to say the least. So, yeah, look, look, e Elon can't, I, on this one, he really can't have it both ways. Um, if this, th this, is, this is so close to just, um, to just, you know, taking books out of the Amazon store or whatever because they have bad words in them. Um, it's not. It's not free speech. It, it's just not free yeah, speech. Yeah, I mean, the irony was: look, even when Jack, his company, but it's not free speech. Sure. When Jack was CEO, the irony is that so many trans people and activists and allies were mad at Jack because they felt like he wasn't doing enough to to censor bullies and to take care of harassment. And I'm sure if I searched for various anti-trans language right now on Twitter, I would find a lot of it. And if I did this a year or two ago, I would also find a lot of it. And, and so at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it, what this feels like is personal grievances, legitimate or otherwise, being elevated unnecessarily because of the platform that Elon Musk has as the richest person in the world or various activists have. Everybody, everybody feels like the world is not exactly the way that they would design it. Everybody does. And we are making really broad claims about sometimes what this means about free speech and da, 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 when it's not actually about that. Like there are really big free speech issues happening in the world right now. There is a SWAT team that just arrested a bunch of protesters in Atlanta for handing out pamphlets and raising a bail, bail fund. That, these are significant issues. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be concerned about some of the constraints that have been put on social media. I do think that these disinformation task forces that have no transparency as to their metrics and that are very politicized mm -hmm. are a big problem. I'm not saying any of that isn't a problem. But some of the core goals that were articulated by Elon Musk and some of the other conservatives, particularly in this space, and the, and the liberals who were mad about this stuff too, are very subjective claims that have to do with their personal feelings. People have made the argument that Elon Musk used to tweet happy pride and everyone is welcome to buy a Tesla. And there was some shift that happened around the time that his partner left him and started dating a trans person. And maybe that, who knows what is motivating the, these kinds of feelings. But not everything that is bothering you in your I think personal it was life. His proximity to one of his children's school system. That's, uh, that's also a theory that's been floated. And you, yeah. he can have that kind of a personal problem. Yeah. But making this into this global free speech fight and claiming the mantle of a vanguard of free speech rights, rights and interests yeah. when you're really just pursuing your own petty claims is not the move. Uh, should mention also that you know this comes in the wake of his announcement that Linda Yaccarino would be the new CEO of Twitter. There were a lot of conservative, conservatives expressing concern about her given her kind of mainstream background, some World Economic Forum connections, um, mm -hmm. that sort of thing there. So, so if you were worried, you're probably feeling pretty vindicated if you're worried yeah. right now whether she actually has anything to do with this, we don't know. And maybe, you know, maybe Elon will appear on Twitter. I'm <laughs> sure he's he's seen it by now. He's not he's not very he's not away from the platform for very long. <laughs> he might reply and go looking into this, what is this, and yeah. reverse it. I don't yeah. know. Who but uh, for the moment it seems very sus. <laughs> we'll have more rising right after this.